One perplexing thing about cancer is that we usually don't know what causes it. There are risk factors, yes, but few cancers are linked to a specific cause and effect thing. But there is one cancer that we know the cause of, that's cervical cancer, and the usual cause is human papillomavirus, HPV. Well, how does one get HPV, asks you? It's usually through sexual contact, be it anal or oral or vaginal sex. That's why HPV is linked not only to cervical cancers, but also to cancers of the mouth, cancers of the vagina, of the vulva, and even penile cancers in men. We're talking about more than 100 variants of these nasty sounding viruses, but fortunately for us, only about 30 or so of them are of real concern. And in cervical cancer, two genotypes of the virus are considered high risk, Heman papillomavirus 16 and Heman papillomavirus 18. These two alone are responsible for more than 70% of cervical cancers worldwide. A good number of people, however, can also clear the virus on their own, and this is the good news. Since the virus is sexually transmitted, the easiest and simplest way to not acquire the infection is to be very careful in your sex life. Being sexually active early increases your chances of getting the virus. Unprotected sex also is the easiest way to get it, but using condoms is not bulletproof either. So you need to limit your number of sexual partners. So how does a sexually active woman process this information? The whole point is if a woman has human papillomavirus, her cervix should be checked regularly to catch any cellular abnormalities early. Starting from the age of 21, any sexually active woman needs to have a pap test every three years. A senior citizen may not uh, need to do so because above 60, 65 years, if you have tested negative with repeated pap tests Regularly, you may be exempted from this test as you may no longer be at risk. A pap test is very easy. It simply means getting a sample of your cervix cells so that it can be assessed in the lab. It's very fast, very easy, will take maybe half an hour in your doctor's office, and the lab will assess the sample cervical cells for any precancer signs. The medical term used here is cervical dysplasia. If everything comes out normal, then you can come back every three years to repeat the pap test again. At the same time that you're doing the pap test, your doctor can also uh, advise to co-test with HPV test. This is to see if you have any of the high-risk HPV, the genotype that I have mentioned earlier, HPV 16 and 18. If the results of the pap test or HPV test come out suspicious, then your healthcare provider may want to obtain a biopsy of some kind of your cervix and then a thorough assessment in the lab. We can see easily how important screening is by the difference in the cancer rates in developed versus developing countries. In women in the developed world, cervical cancer is fourth common cancer. However, in the developing world, next to breast cancer, cervical cancer is the second most common cancer, especially in many African countries. Screening is very important and it has undoubtedly saved many, many lives. Now let's talk about vaccination. It's possible to vaccinate against the most common uh, strains of human papillomavirus and the vaccine is very effective before the onset of sexual activity. And according to the CDC, it recommends that boys and girls receive their vaccine dose against human papillomavirus from the ages of 11 and 12. The vaccine is also approved up until the age of 45 to both men and women who don't have human papillomavirus. An important thing though is the vaccine will protect against 90% of infection. But like I said, we're talking about more than 100 strains of the virus. Thus, you will still need to have protected safe sex with limited sexual partners and you will still need to do your regular pap tests every three years. Finally, uh, one more risk factor that you can reduce to lower your risk of cervical cancer is to stop smoking. Smoking has been associated with cervical cancer and women who smoke have a double risk of getting cervical cancer than non-smokers. In summary, these are the four main things that you can do as a woman to prevent cervical cancer. One, regular screenings with pap tests slash HPV and two, to reduce your numbers of sexual partners, 
as well as practice safe sex. And three, HPV vaccination when applicable. And finally, quit smoking. This is what I had for you today. And uh, till next time, stay safe.